Good day, everybody. My name is Chris Peters. I am an automation integration engineer with the Professional Services Organization of Tricentis. And today I'm going to prevent, present to you uh, QTest Launch and how to increase your automation coverage with both our uh, standard in-house uh, parsers and agents, as well as uh, some discussion on how to customize uh, your integrations for your, uh, your own frameworks. So I'm going to take you through uh, several different ways to integrate with QTest to get your test results uh, displaying here in QTest Manager. Uh, these are all going to be using the launch umbrella of products. Um, and we have a foundation product for launch that is called our automation host. So I'm going to walk through the automation host, kind of take it this at a granular level, show you several different agents that we have that you can uh, perform out of the box integrations with, and then a few others that you can customize your integrations with. And then we're going to move over into QTest Manager with the scheduling and then launch as the overall uh, dashboard for your automation. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the automation host. Uh, this is what existed prior to launch even becoming its own product. And uh, this is the foundation that we have for performing your automations if you lack a CI tool or if you're working in a more uh, minuscule environment such as on your own laptops or workstations. And this allows you to kick off uh, various uh, automations from uh, your personal computer as well as from uh, QTest uh, manager. Uh, it allows you to schedule them so that you can have uh, various sorts of um, intervals and also uh, you can run them ad hoc one at a time uh, whenever you require them. As you can see, I have quite a number of agents installed, but we're just going to go through some of the basics here uh, because you're not going to be expected to have quite this many in your own environments, but I have a lot of integration, so you can see quite a few on my list. Okay. The default port for the automation host, uh, as you can see from my setup right here, appears to be 6789. However, during the course of the installation of the automation host, you can uh, set that up any way you like. Uh, during the setup phase, you can actually, uh, I think you can determine the name of it as well as the uh, local host or IP address that you're setting it up on, as well as the port number. So. Um, and in this case, with the port, since this is internally running on your own systems, you don't really have to worry about this port except for when you want to access the uh, internal web interface as you see here. Uh, if you're worried about the ports that you're going to require when you're communicating with QTest and back, that actually uses your traditional HTTP and HTTPS ports. So it just uses web traffic like normal and you won't have to set up anything, uh, any special firewall rules or anything to that effect. Uh, we have several different types of agents for the automation host. Um, and I'm going to take you through each one of those. Uh, but first, as the automation host is a service, you probably want to know how this is uh, acquired and how you can run it in your systems. If you go to our support site, which I'll give you the link to in a little bit, you'll be able to get information on downloading the automation host service. It is written in Java, so it is cross-platform compatible, works on Windows, Linux, Mac, Docker, pretty much anything you require. And uh, we keep this updated on a fairly regular basis. And through the launch interface, you can actually update your service instance uh, pretty much dynamically anytime you want whenever we make a release. The service is the foundation that runs all of the agents. And the agents are configurations for various jobs that you can set up uh, through the automation host interface or through the launch itself. And the various agents are responsible for taking care of your automation tests. It will uh, kick your tests off, parse the test results, and deliver those test results back to QTest. And we have three different types of agents. We have built-in agents, we have the shell agent, and we have the universal agent. And all three of those work in uh, several different ways. And I'll show you what the test results look like in QTest and how you set them up within the automation host itself. So after I have got my automation host set up, which I do here, uh, you can see a little bit of key information. You can see that we're connected to a QTest instance up here in the upper left-hand corner. And then over on the right-hand side, we see the name of our host as well as our polling frequency, which is something that you can change. The polling frequency is how often the automation host will uh, communicate with QTest server to find out if there are any uh, scheduled runs that need to occur at any given point. You can also choose to hit the Poll Now button if you've scheduled something and you want to see it executed immediately. You don't have to wait for the schedule anymore. 
Down here at the bottom is our list of agents. As I said, you can see I have quite a few. You're not going to see that in a normal environment. Uh, however, you have the option here to run and edit all of these agents as well as add new ones with this button here. So this is where we're going to go on a really quick overview of all the various agent types that we have within QTest. So once I pop this open, it comes to the universal agent, but we're actually going to come to this one at the end because it's the most complex of all the agents. If I open up this drop down, you can see all of the types of agents that we have, and five of them are our built in agents. We have one for JUnit for Java, Cucumber for Java, JBehave for Java, UFT, and TestNG. I do have one of these set up, and I'll show you what it looks like, but all of them pretty much report back to QTest in a very, very similar format. Uh, depending on uh, the test that you're running and what you have as far as your folder structure within QTest. The other type of agent that we have that we haven't discussed yet is the shell agent. And the shell agent is a completely custom integration that you build yourself so that you can um, exercise any test that you have on frameworks that we don't support out of the box, as well as do the parsing on your own and deliver those uh, results back to QTest via the API. The API is something that we'll touch on briefly a little bit later. The third type of agent is, is, of course, the one that opened up initially, which is the universal agent, which is a more customized result that has its own parsers built into it. And we'll cover this one in detail in just a moment. So we'll hit one of the built-in agents right now. I have a test ng agent already set up, but just to show you what it looks like to be able to set it up initially, you just name it, you connect it to a project that you have access to, and then you point it to the directory full of files, which files you're going to include, how you're going to execute it. We support the Java command line as well as Ant and Maven, and uh, what the actual command is, as well as any uh, additional files such as a POM file or, in this case, a testng file. If we take a look at one of the testng agents that I already have set up, we can see this one is fully configured already. And I'm not adding any different arguments and, or anything to this, but it shows the POM file since we're using Maven to, uh, and uh, JUnit to kick this off, as well as uh, TestNG, so you can see both of the configuration files there. So just a really quick overview of the shell agent, which works in a completely different manner to the built-in agents. The shell agent allows you to pretty much write your own custom integration. Uh, we do have several examples of how to write these integrations out in our GitHub repository, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but we have a few of these set up within my demo environment here. And if we open up one of these, we just see that we're running a Windows batch file. This batch file is responsible for running a git bash command to pull the latest code from a git um, repository. And then it will also kick off a Python uh, script that will be responsible for uh, kicking off the tests, parsing the test results, and then delivering those to QTest via the API. We're not going to get into the code for that right now, but these processes are highly customizable, take a lot more upfront work, but you have a lot more flexibility in the way your test results appear in QTest. Once we go back over to QTest Manager, I'll show you the difference between all of the way all of these report. And we also have the universal agent. So the universal agent is kind of a combination between the built-in agents and the shell agent, but with more customization. You can actually write a pre-execute script in your native uh, compiler language. So basically, if you're on Windows, it would be a batch file. If you're on uh, Mac or Linux, it would be a bash shell script. But this will allow you to perform individual actions prior to executing your test which in this case, we're using it to go to a GitHub repository and pull down the latest version of our code. Then we have an execute command. And the execute, execute command, it can be written for a specific interpreter. And we have several different interpreters that you can pick from. We support shell for Windows, or sorry, shell for Mac and Linux, uh, batch for Windows, uh, Node Framework JavaScript, as well as Python 2 and Python 3. It should be noted that Node Framework JavaScript does come with the automation host uh, automatically, so you won't have to install that on your system if you prefer to use this interpreter. But Python 2 and Python 3 would have to be installed on those systems if you want to use those interpreters. Once you've selected your interpreter, you select your working directory, and then you can write code directly in uh, the executor box. In this case, where I'm, calling, I'm calling a PowerShell script. I also have another example of this. Uh, let me find it. There it is. Where we're calling the Newman, uh, the Newman runner directly uh, from the command line. 
So both of these actually do the same thing, except one of them will deliver uh, the test results in a different manner, and this one actually uses the parser. The parsers are a different component, and you can see here that we have uh, quite a number of them in this environment. Uh, we have built-in parsers, which are stock parsers that are supplied to you with the automation host, and they come with it. You know, as soon as you download it, you have access to them. And then you can also create custom parsers. So from JMeter down on my current list, these are all the in-house parsers that we currently support and that we've developed for users to be able to utilize. The top four here are custom parsers that were written in my environment and have been added to the universal agent and are now add, uh, available for anybody working out of this demo environment. And we'll get into that in a little bit more uh, in a little bit. So once we have our project set up, our agent set up, we can then run most of them directly from here if we so desired. Uh, we can just kick it off like this for the universal agent. We actually get a console log and we can execute the test directly from here and we can follow along as the test executes. This is probably the most transparency you'll have out of any of the agents. Here we can see that it's actually run and we have our test results and the current job status is now completed, which means our test results are in queue test. You can also run any of the shell agents directly from the command line as well without waiting for anything to be scheduled. But since these integrations here that I have require uh, scheduled runs from queue test, we're not going to run those automatically from here. And then we also have the test ng agent that I showed earlier. You can try to run these from here, but it will only run if there are uh, scheduled tests from queue test. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to the Tracentis Academy channel to get the latest tips and tricks and user tutorials to help you best utilize Tracentis' continuous testing platform. For more information, please click the links in the description.